we had talked about the immersion effect in that effect we understood that it is not just one pigment that is playing its role there are there is a possibility that different pigments would be involved now we are going to jump to the next topic that is about the spectrums two spectrums we are going to study one is the absorption spectrum and corresponding to that absorption we have the action spectrum now in case you are hearing this thing for the first time and it goes over your head that what this must be let us see what the term itself has in its words the meanings that we can decipher from it first is spectrum now spectrum whenever this word comes do keep in mind that you are dealing with white light which can be broken down into different wavelengths and those different wavelengths correspond to different colors one thing now we would be dealing with those different wavelengths of white light that means we are having a spectrum now the other word in both the cases one is absorption and the other one is action spectrum now you're clear with spectrum let's see what absorption spectrum has to say as the name suggests there would be absorption of something now what that absorption would be because it is a spectrum because it is dealing with white light because it is having different wavelengths in it the white light i'm talking about the absorption of different wavelengths of the white light by a surface when it is depicted by a curve all right that would be known as action spectrum not action spectrum uh, pardon me absorption spectrum i repeat it again the absorption of the different wavelengths of the white light as represented by the spectrum if they are taken in account in the form of a curve that would form the absorption spectrum okay and when we talk about absorption spectrum we are saying here that here that it is the absorption by a particular substance absorption of what of different wavelengths of the white light so here we have the representation of almost a region known as vibgyor where we have the wavelengths ranging from violet to red this is the wavelength in nanometers and these different colors are depicting different different pigments which are present inside the leaves okay uh, this entire absorption spectrum is obtained by uh, by an instrument known as spectrophotometer if you can remember it it's good that this is the instrument that we use for getting the absorption spectrum now this absorption spectrum shows us that how each um, this uh, photosynthetic pigment that we are considering is going to absorb the wavelength which which wavelength it is going to absorb and where the absorption is maximum what you see over here is that i have used three colors to represent this blue part represents chlorophyll a chlorophyll a is a photosynthetic pigment then the green part represents chlorophyll b and the red part represents carotenoids all the pigments except the chlorophylls they would comprise the carotenoids specifically beta carotene now this is what is the absorption spectrum this first one is the absorption spectrum as you can see we are showing the wavelengths over here and this region this region as it is higher it shows the absorption of light that means absorption of energy by the particular pigment at that particular wavelength so let us consider the chlorophyll a pigment that is represented in blue color it absorbs maximum in this region okay this is the maximum absorption that is it is showing that is the violet and blue region that a violet and indigo region as we move further the wavelengths are increasing it the absorption over here it declines to a great level and it uh, later on rises in the red region again so this chlorophyll a shows the absorption in the violet and the red regions where it is absorbing the maximum wavelengths for taking up the energy so this shows the absorption spectrum of the chlorophyll a pigment similarly in the case of chlorophyll b what you see the absorption is maximum in this blue region then it comes sharply declined it goes and then it re is like in the wavy pattern very low absorption takes place then it rises again in the red region similar to what chlorophyll a is doing so chlorophyll b has this uh, uh, absorption spectrum talking about the carotenoids which are represented by the 
color they are basically they are reddish orange color and their region of absorption ranges between the violet and blue then the absorption stops they do not absorb in the red region that is why they reflect it and they are reddish in color so this is the absorption spectrum of three different pigments that we have talked about now what is the relevance of this absorption spectrum that we get we get an action spectrum as well when we have a good absorption spectrum obtained by our experiment experimental evidences we according to that observe that corresponding to these wavelengths where the absorption is maximum the rate of photosynthesis is also high so the action spectrum contrary to the absorption spectrum it shows the rate of photosynthesis depicted in a relative manner so while the absorption spectrum was representation of the wavelengths absorbed by different substances okay and we take those substances to be pigments the action spectrum is the activity this is the absorption that the wavelength has absorbed the wavelength has taken up it is being absorbed at different wavelengths by different pigments that that was represented graphically now we have to represent the action that action over here because we are dealing with the topic of photosynthesis the action over here would be photosynthesis now how that photosynthesis is observed it is absor observed as rate of photosynthesis okay now this rate of photosynthesis when it is depicted relatively relatively according to different wavelengths at what wavelength do we have which rate that is what is action spectrum like if you have the wavelength that ranges between violet and indigo what is the rate of photosynthesis at that point then as you move through the spectrum what would be the rate of photosynthesis that would be represented in the action spectrum that we have over here now unlike the absorption spectrum which shows dark um, steep uprises and then sharp declines this photosynthetic rate is not having that much declining these dips as we have in the action spectrum rather it is having almost a little bit elevated rate then we have almost constant rate where there is minimum absorption even at that point you can see those wavelengths only are represented over here we do not have declined photosynthesis as it should be expected from here get my point the rate of photosynthesis is almost equivalent it sharply declines after red okay the red wavelength that is known as red drop as we call it now what is the reason that this 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 region of i would repeat what is the reason that this region of the graph does not decline corresponding to this we talked about that it is ultimately the photosynthetic pigments that take up the energy and they are responsible for the photosynthesis over here we see that there is least energy absorbed over in this zone but the photosynthesis is not declining like the way it has shown over here the spectrum should have been lower it the reason behind it is that all these pigments are working together and that point you will understand when you study photosynthetic unit because all these pigments they would not be working individually they would rather be working as units and this is the reason this zone why it shows photosynthesis though the absorption is minimum over here this is the reason that why people or you can say great minds they got into studying that what is actually happening it would not be a single pigment that would be working there would be a group of pigments which would be involved and then they came to the conclusion that there are photosynthetic units which are involved which we'll study later on but for now what you have to keep in mind that there is an absorption spectrum and contrary to that we have an action spectrum which shows the relative rate of photosynthesis keeping in mind the absorption of the different wavelengths the rate of photosynthesis is little bit slightly different because we do not get the same dip as in this case now uh, who proposed this basically uh, who came with the idea of uh, this uh, action spectrum and how it was experimentally proven there was a scientist known as t w engelman you have to remember his name and 
Okay. He was the scientist. He is responsible for telling us experimentally that it is uh, the action spectrum actually is there. You see that rate of photosynthesis corresponds to this action spectrum. What he did was he used a green algae and same way as we have Vibgyor, a similar manner as the action spectrum is shown. He used the green algae and he illuminated the green algae in the same way using a spectrum. Okay, some part of it was having violet wavelength, indigo, blue, same as we have the white light spectrum. Now, what happened after some time, he also used certain bacteria which feed on oxygen. So, he used, uh, he took a culture in which he, uh, he took a green algae and inside it he put some uh, aerobic bacteria. And then he illuminated that uh, culture with this white light that was scattered, scattered white light. It was in the form of the spectrum. Now, what was observed after some time that the bacteria, they got accumulated at these regions. Now, you know, the bacteria is feeding on oxygen. They are aerobic bacteria. So the more concentration of bacteria was found in these regions and least was here. So he in a way proposed the action spectrum on the basis of evolution of oxygen. Okay, so you have to remember these things that in 1882 there came somebody by name of uh, T.W. Engelman. He came with the idea and showed us how action spectrum is there, uh, not action spectrum, absorption spectrum actually is there by identifying the rate of oxygen evolution using an aerobic bacteria. He proposed that in this zone and in this zone, the rate of photosynthesis is highest. Okay, These regions, they do not produce much oxygen because it depends on the rate of photosynthesis. How much photosynthesis is taking place, that much would be evolution of oxygen and that was proved by using the bacteria. And from the absorption spectrum, we get the action spectrum as well. These are the two terms that you have to remember before you uh, set up yourself into studying the actual mechanism of photosynthesis, how it takes place, what are the units involved in it.